the deep the deep stuff 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 teaching the deep the deep stuff 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 teaching teaching with guest Joan Johnson and we are recording thanks for your patience yeah what? thanks for your patience thanks for being here well, thank you all for having me yeah well I'd love to this is just a one or two question podcast so the question is was were there was there a moment or moments in your life of inspiration or learning that you can communicate today that changed the trajectory of your life or teaching thank you so much for that question and i think um there's so many lessons that i've learned i think as as human beings we're consistently evolving personally professionally spiritually, emotionally. So um, as that translates to education, um, <clears throat> there's, been, there's been moments of inspiration in my entire life and started with um, my experience, my exposure rather, to African-American history as a discipline, which started when I was in the sixth grade. <laughs> my um, sixth grade teacher, late, the late uh, Doris um, Sutton, she was made quite a profound impact on my life because she notice my interest in the study of African-American life, history, and culture. And that's what I do as a profession. I'm a social historian of African-American life and history and culture. And I made that distinction in terms of life being our present state of existence, um, our history, our past, and our culture, the things that we create, um, tangible and intangible. But in terms of that inspiration or that I think for me, it was her investing, seeing number one, my interest. And so she was taking note, observation was very key in that process. Yes. And so that, um, that's a lesson that I drew, that I applied to, to teaching, and that you have to find that point of passion um, in a student. And in that, you begin to cultivate it and provide the opportunities and access within your, your sphere of uh, influence and resources um, so that they can grow and evolve. Um, and there's an exchange in that process because the educator and the student, they both, both grow and they both evolve. What was it like then? What, do you remember like a season of time that you said, wow, African-American, has, there was something that I never knew existed or there was something that I never knew applied of an interest. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you remember that time in the sixth grade? Yeah, I remember um, she was really exposing us to to local history. Um, of mm. course, we've been taught about Dr. Martin Luther King, Harriet Tubman, and those, you know, very celebrated people. Yeah. But uh, throughout that week, they would bring um, alumni of the institution, of the school, uh, people who had attended the school, particularly those who had graduated from the historically black uh, high school, um, because there was a, a period, of course, of, se of segregation. And so most of these students, she had taught. So she taught my parents. And so she's now teaching me. And so um, they would bring uh, alumni of the high school back um, who had, you know, excelled in the various areas of, of profession um, to talk to us about their life, their experience. And so there was this personal connection that was taking place. Um, and so I think that's really what called, prompted me to really be interested in the local stories um, because it was you know, great to learn about these wonderful people, but there were people around us people in our families who attended, who lived in our communities, who yeah. were doing profound things and they were making profound impacts on the world. How, did it, how did, did it cause you to feel differently about yourself and your gifts? Did it change the way you thought about yourself by learning these things? Oh, oh absolutely, and, and it still does. I mean, even when researching my, my family genealogy, um, I'm consistently inspired thinking about people who were making meaning of their lives in a time where they were told their lives were meaningless. <laughs> and so, you know, trying to make sense out of something that's senseless and uh, making and remaking their lives in these very harsh situations. And so um, I complain a lot less <laughs> in life uh, because I'm seeing the ways that they were being creative and um, their intellect, their inno innovative innovation, um, their ingenuity and problem solving and navigating the world that consistently inspires me every day. And I apply, apply those lessons every day to my life and I teach them as well. 
And you, you teach in the sense of community, meaning what you just said about the exchange between teacher and student is a communal thing, but it's yes. also each one is learning, which I know even just from um, uh, talking with you and interviewing you a few times, I see that uh, your connection with others, with community, and of discovering community is very much a theme in your work. Absolutely. And that's really um, an African-centered approach that I bring to my work, that liberation, however that looks, um, takes place in the context of community, um, not necessarily with the individual. So it's recognizing how we all fit in this, this thing called life, and we all have something to give in, uh, in our communities, in our communities of learning, and our communities where we live. So I'm always taking this very holistic approach um, to the process of teaching. <coughs> Rugged individualism is not what you're talking about, which yes. is a very American Absolutely. Western concept. <laughs> but that's brilliant in terms of community. Um, there was also, I remember you saying that there was an instructor, maybe it was in journalism that you were learning, that you that the light turned on about in journalism yeah. or about how you can become an oral historian using your journalism ability. Yeah, that was um, <clears throat> Professor Joel Gamble in a communications um, law and ethics course. Um, and he, once again, as Ms. Sutton did, he uh, saw that I was really interested because he would always give us these case studies, legal case studies, um, as related to communication studies and his, his, um, the studies that he were, cases rather, um, really focused on local issues. And so he saw my interest. I guess he noticed how I would perk up every time uh, he would go delve into these case studies because I understood, I knew these places. I was familiar with them. And so um, after class, he invited me to his office and he said, there's this opportunity. Um, there's a, a, a woman who's looking for a student and uh, who can do oral history. And I think you can do this, being that you know, you're a journalism major, as well as I can tell you have a profound interest in, in history. So once again, there's the educator taking notice and providing me and linking the student with an opportunity that has now led to my career. Interesting. Do you find that you turn that into with with your students are, are you um do you find that encouraging them and seeing them grow in those areas are is a, is a benefit to you is, is something that brings you passion oh yeah I, I think for me it's a life calling so when a student approaches me or either i identify that oh, hey, they have this interest i mean i had a student yesterday who was expressing um an interest on doing this social history study in in charlottesville and so um, he was, had been exposed to the oral history methodology. And so I was just showing him some, some methods that would really apply um, to doing local history. And um, I, saw the, I, I saw the enlightenment, <laughs> the, the light, so to speak, and, um, and his interest. And so from there, I began to point him to resources on how to best conduct this study and how not to necessarily tell him what direction to go, but also allow him to explore. And because um, his question was to me, well, it seems like I'm starting out broad. I said, well, that's fine, because the more you delve in, you're going to find that, that thing that really resonates with you. Yes. Tell me more, though. There's something in the local stories that you found in both cases in uh, later in college and also in the sixth grade. What is it about the local stories, the people that you may know uh, in an everyday way? What is that, how does that interest you? Like, what is your interest in that? I think it's, um, <clears throat> there's a saying I used, I, I usually, uh, I've been thinking about here recently, and having a history that's useful. Um, and that's how I feel about it in terms of, oftentimes when we think of history, think of it as something that's far removed. Or, uh, but I think the local history is a, is a, number one, it's a story that we connect with on a personal level, and it connects broadly, right? Um, for an example, when I'm, uh, I had students, well, I used to do community, type of community education in public schools, and I would go out and educate students about um, local history and whatnot, but I would always tie it to the broader themes of American history, of world history, but I always start with the place that they're familiar with. And for me, I think that's what makes it useful, um, that these are not just um, you know, moments in time, fleeting moments, that they also connect to the present. Um, that if we look at, at the historical arc of, of various situations, we can see where there's a, a correlation on many levels uh, from the past as it connects to the present. The, the local and the immediate give way to the universal. Yes. And 
you know, national, international stories. <coughs> you also mentioned a, a quote or a poem from Maya Angelou that was an influence. Oh, yeah. Um, a quote that I heard her say many years ago that if you teach, you have to live your teaching. And the way that I apply that is that if I'm not enthused about it, then I can't generate that type of energy. I have to be passionate about and about what I what I want the what I'm teaching. And so I don't think you can really be effective if you're not really living out that passion, um, because again, that's that shared you know energy that's taking place. And I think that's one of the supreme jobs of the educator is as I'm just here to just, you know, just to kind of spark a fire. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, that's how I apply that. Yeah. Did you ever have the opportunity to go back to so the, those instructors or even the sixth grade teacher and say, Hey, this influenced me. Oh yeah. Um, it's interesting because Mr. Sutton who passed before I moved to the East coast over a year ago and I, was contacted by her daughter um, because I would write her. I would send her my, my high school um, you know, graduation announcements, and when I would you know, make another milestone in life, I would always keep her, keep her abreast of that. And then one day she, she joined Facebook when Facebook kind of you know, got popular. And so she would keep in touch with me that way. And her daughter told me um, as she was going through her things after her mom passed, she said, Mom wrote a letter for you. Um, and she said, I want to give you this letter. And she was expressing that she was very proud of you and how you have taken those lessons that she imparted and you're now, you're living it. How did that, how did that make you, how did you feel after that? Oh, wow. I felt uh, that was an amazing feeling because I attended her memorial service and they asked me to speak as one of her former students. And so um, I think I, I spoke about how the, our teachers they live within us. We take their lessons. We take their lives with us in every facet of life. She shows up in my class. She shows up when I advise students. All of these people, and not just her, but many of my educators, they all, they live within me. And so I take these lessons wherever I go. See, I, that's a great moment there. <laughs> they, they live in you and, and you take them with you wherever you go. That's, that, I have not thought about it like that. It's, it's really interesting. Anything else you want? It's like, it's, it's, you know, it causes me to think about the instructors I had that changed my life, and um, I'm not very close to any of them. Um, but I, I want to go back and see if I can be, because of what you're saying. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to say about uh, how those inspirations happened? Or I, I think we've got a lot of brilliant. Um, I think I was thinking about, you know, there's this, and I can't think of who, who penned this quote, but it said, when the student is ready, uh, the teacher shows up. And when the student is truly ready, the teacher leaves. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> it makes a lot of sense when you think about it. And that's my approach. I show up for who's ready. Um, I don't care about, you know, background. I don't care anything, but I, I'm showing up for who is ready to learn. And I think, you know, it, even as it applies to my own life, um, although the teachers may be physically not present anymore once the lesson has I've gotten the lesson I'm taking them everywhere that I go um, and so that that has been my approach I show up for who's ready and I, I think about the times in my own life uh, when I've um, had the greatest moments in my learning experience it's because I was ready I was open willing to learn and that still happens even when I'm, when, when I'm interacting with students as the instructor I have to also have an open mind and an open heart to hear what they have to say because they have just as much to teach me as I have to teach them. Wow. It's so communal. Yeah. And, and those who from the past are now still with you in oh, that yeah. mindset. And that's, that's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what William Faulkner said, which can be taken many ways. The past is really not the past. It's very much present. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> any? Do you have any comments or questions? Because you you, th you seem like you're thinking about stuff. Yeah, I I love that perspective. And as someone who really wants to be a teacher in the future, it's, it's really inspiring to think that, you know, I don't know if it's a goal, but you know, to to hope that I can like be a, a force in in my students' lives mm -hmm. that that stays with them in a positive way and informs like how they live their lives to the fullest. Absolutely. Yeah. And I personally don't think, you know, 
we have a choice as to who our student will be. Mm-hmm. Um, I think about just various phases of my life and career because I worked in industry as well, but I always found myself in a position where I was teaching. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> Even working in corporate America for seven years while working on a doctorate, I was still in positions <laughs> where I was somewhat in some manner facilitating or teaching in some way. So um, and I learned things from that that I just apply. Mm-hmm. So it's just a, a never ending process It's a constant evolution. Uh, but it's I think it's the key is just being attentive mm-hmm. um, to people, to your environment, to place, to space. What is this place telling me? Yeah. And I I was just talking to my therapist this week about how going back in person for classes, I suddenly felt like I was having a conversation again with my with my teachers or my professors in like a a more personal way. And having that feel like a two way conversation where I could just quickly ask a question and get a response. Yeah. It's like that is that's so much of what learning really is. It is. It's like is it's it's not just a someone imparting knowledge on someone else, but sort of a mutual Mm -hmm activity i don't know yeah i mean that's how you know that's that's production of not that's how knowledge is produced Mm -hmm. in these spaces i mean you may say something that just spark an idea and i'm like okay you know i see where i can take that maybe hmm, let me go write up an abstract (laughs) on this and my thoughts start coming out you know (laughs) right and you know how can i apply this to one of my community that's 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 why i love um field research Mm. because i'm in the homes, I'm in the on the porch of of people in their space, in their environment, and they've been gracious enough to invite me in as a research as a researcher. But that exchange that's taking place is just is revolutionary. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, that's why I'm I'm so focused. That's why I think my love of of community history, local history, is is why I like it so much because I'm more into the, the story of the folk. Yeah. <laughs> well, I imagine when you're so focused on that micro, like that 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 single story, the local mm-hmm. like history, it must really be amazing when you realize how like it, it fits into the larger patchwork of Ab- like absolutely the national. Or, yeah. Because people's lives, they've they when they, their lives have not been limited to this place and space. Right. They have interacted with all types of people. They've been around the world. I mean, it's just amazing um, the things that I've learned. I remember one woman whom I was interviewing. Um, she was the great granddaughter of, he was on the first black, CPO A. Jones. He was on the first black attorneys in, in Arkansas. Mm. And I'm interviewing her and she told me something about her life that just totally blew my mind that she was one of the first, um, employees of the Negro Digest, which later became, uh, uh, Ebony and Jet magazine founded by John H. Johnson. Wow. And she said, I was one of his first employees and I made this amount of money. And on this particular day, I would buy this dress. My sister lived, she was my roommate. And she's telling me all about these experiences of a young woman who's from Mississippi, you know, migrated to Chicago and she's working for John H. Johnson at then the Negro Digest that became Ebony and Jet magazine. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that is history. Yeah. Just through the, the common, just through the common folk, as you're saying. Like, yeah. It's just, uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Brilliant. Well, thank you for being our first guest. Thank you for having <laughs> me. It's been great. Thank you. Okay. Great. Cut.